Greetings, Spooky fans! Michael here, and Pokemon Sword and Shield, like any new generation of Pokemon, have introduced a batch of totally new Pokemon. Almost any Pokemon fan would want to know which of these Pokemon are the most impressive, so today I'm going to be counting down the top 20 strongest new Pokemon in Sword and Shield. A few things I should clarify before I get started though. The first is that this ranking will be done based solely on the Pokemon's base stat totals. This is what I've done for every ranking the top strongest Pokemon in the past, plus I like doing it this way because it's a numerical way of ranking it rather than a subjective one. Any ties will be broken by which Pokemon has the highest offensive stat. In other words, if two Pokemon have the same base stat total, the stronger one is the one whose attack or special attack is the highest. I'm doing it this way because people tend to associate strength with how hard they can hit. If they are still tied, then the second tiebreaker is head-to-head -head type matchup. Galarian forms do count as new Pokemon, and if a Pokemon has multiple forms with different base stat totals, only the form with the higher base stat total will be included on this list. It'd be lame if one Pokemon species took up multiple entries. Also, in case it wasn't obvious, this video will be full of spoilers. So without further ado, don't forget to leave a like on the video and let's get started with number 20, which is a four-way tie because of course it is. Pokemon Sword and Shield introduced the most unique fossil Pokemon to date. Rather than simply getting a certain fossil that you then revive into a certain Pokemon, you get fossil halves that you then revive together in pairs. There are two top half fossils and two bottom half fossils, resulting in four different combinations and therefore four different Pokemon. Side note, I am very happy that they finally stopped the trend of making every single fossil Pokemon a rock type. I always thought that was dumb, like, oh, just because it was revived from a fossil, it's now a rock type, even though it probably wasn't a rock type Pokemon millions of years ago, like Archaeops. Nothing about Archaeops has to do with rocks, so I'm glad they stopped doing that. Anyways, the four possible fossil Pokemon are Dracozolt, Arctozolt, Arctivish, and Dracovish. They are wild, ridiculous, mismatched creatures, and I love the creativity of them. But as I said, this entry is a four-way tie, because all four of these fossil Pokemon have a base stat total of 505. So to break that tie, we go to the one that has the highest offensive stat. Neither Dracovish nor Arctivish are the strongest, because their base attack stats of 90 are not high enough. Dracozolt and Arctozolt are tied, however, because they both have an attack stat of 100. That means I have to go to the secondary tiebreaker, which is head-to-head -head matchup. Since Dracozolt is an electric dragon type and Arctozolt is an electric ice type, Arctozolt would be more likely to win based purely on type effectiveness. So therefore, Arctozolt is the strongest of these four, and therefore the 20th strongest Pokemon. Now on to number 19, which is Surfetched. Surfetched has a base stat total of 507, a very respectable base stat total. Its HP, special attack, and speed are pretty underwhelming, but its defenses are a good chunk better. Where it really shines though is in its physical attack stat, which is a devastating 135. In case you needed something to compare it to, that is 5 points higher than Garchomp's. Surfetched is a very respectably strong Pokemon, and definitely a huge upgrade in the stat department from Farfetch'd. Both regular and Galarian Farfetch'd only have base stat totals of 377, which was extremely poor for a Pokemon that for so long couldn't evolve. The next strongest Pokemon has a base stat total that's only one point higher than Surfetch'd, that being number 18, Poltegeist. Poltegeist has a base stat total of 508. While its HP, attack, defense, and speed are just okay, its special stats really shine. Its special defense is 114, and its special attack stat is an excellent 134. Poltegeist may not seem like a particularly imposing Pokemon, but I think it's gonna end up being really good. It's got access to Shell Smash and Weak Armor, which can improve its mediocre speed, and also dramatically increase the power of its stored power move. I think it's gonna be a force to be reckoned with. The next several entries are actually a five-way tie because there are five Pokemon that have base stat totals of 510. Just a reminder, the tie will be broken based on their highest offensive stat. 
Because of this tiebreaker method, number 17 ends up being Colossal. Colossal has 80 as both its base attack and special attack stats, which is okay, but not great, hence why it ended up as the lowest of all the base 510 Pokemon. That doesn't mean it's a pushover though, since Colossal definitely fulfills more of a tank role. It's very slow, but it makes up for that with very good defenses, having base 110 HP, 120 physical defense, and 90 special defense. Unfortunately, its typing isn't great defensively since Rock Fire has two different four times weaknesses, but with access to some pretty strong moves like Heat Crash or Gyro Ball, plus having access to Tar Shot, which can make its enemies weaker to fire type moves, I think it could end up being kinda decent. The next 510 base stat total Pokemon is number 16, Sandaconda. Its tiebreaker stat is its physical attack, which is 107, which I think is pretty solid. Sandaconda is in a similar situation to Colossal, where it tends to be better on the defensive front. Its best stat is its physical defense, which is actually higher than Colossal's, and it's also much faster but in exchange for the higher physical attack, physical defense, and speed, it ends up with lower special attack, special defense, and much lower HP than Colossal. Sandaconda is an interesting, cool Pokemon, but I have trouble believing that it will make much of a name for itself in the competitive scene. Its attack and physical defense are very solid, but the rest of its stats I don't think are good enough for it to make a real name for itself. Maybe it'll be good on Sandstorm teams, but it doesn't even get access to Sandstream. It gets access to Sand Spit, which is just worse Sandstream because it has to take a hit before the Sandstorm will be activated. Like I said, I like Sandaconda. I think it's cool, but I'm not sure how good it's gonna be. Next is number 15, Grimmsnarl. The first ever fully evolved dark fairy type Pokemon and one a heck of a horrifying monster. I kinda like it. Grimmsnarl's best stat is its base 120 attack, which landed it in third place among this base 510 total tie. Its next best stats are its HP and special attack, both of which are 95, and the rest of its stats are mediocre. Grimmsnarl isn't the fastest Pokemon, but with its access to Prankster, which gives priority to utility status type moves, I think it could actually end up being somewhat useful, either in an offensive or a priority utility role. We interrupt this video to bring you a special news bulletin. My new shirt, the Coffee, it's super effective shirt, will only be on sale for a few more days. Make sure to pick one up using either the link in the description below or by clicking the shirts displayed below the video. Next up is number 14, Hatterene. This psychic fairy type Pokemon is Kind of a strange one to me because, is it just supposed to be a lady wearing a hat? Like what? what is the design inspiration for this? I don't know, if you know, tell me in the comments because right now, all I've got is hat wearing woman. Hatterene has an incredible special attack stat of 136, which is how it got to be the 14th strongest new Pokemon. Its defenses are pretty solid too, having 95 base defense and 103 base special defense. Also, its physical attack isn't horrible, coming in at base 90. Where Hatterene really falls short is its base HP of 57 and its horrendous base speed of only 29. Despite its poor speed though, I foresee Hatterene being pretty solid in the competitive scene, especially in the doubles format. It'd be amazing on a Trick Room team, plus it's got a new move called Life Dew which heals both itself and allies, which is really cool, and it's got the ability Healer, which only works in double battles. So I think Hatterene will be pretty solid. And the final base 510 new Pokemon is number 13, Cursula, the evolution for Galarian Corsula. Cursula actually has a pretty similar stat spread to Hatterene. Its speed stat is one point higher, its HP is three points higher, its physical attack is five points higher, and its special attack, its best stat, is nine points higher, coming in at the absurd number of 145. Where they differ is that Cursula took a chunk of points in physical defense and moved them to special defense, resulting in a very high special defense of 130. I'm really interested to see how viable Cursula ends up becoming. Like Hatterene, it'll be incredible on Trick Room teams, but other than that, I'm not really sure. Its terrible speed combined with poor physical defense could mean that it ends up being KO'd before it even has the chance to attack. 
I actually think there's a decent chance it'll end up being used less than its pre-evolution Galarian Corsola, which ends up with spectacular defenses if it holds an Eviolite. So, we'll have to see. All right, that finally finishes up the five-way tie between the base 510 total Pokemon. So next up, we have another freaking tie. Thankfully though, this tie is only between two Pokemon, and they both have a base stat total of 520. The bottom member of this tie is number 12, Obstagoon. Obstagoon's best offensive stat is its physical attack, which is base 90. This is pretty solid but it's actually only Obstagoon's third best stat, behind its base 93 HP and base 101 physical defense. Its other stats are a low special attack, which is completely fine, a solid base 81 special defense, and a quite good base 95 speed. This makes Obstagoon's stats pretty balanced because its worst stat, its special attack, is one that it's probably not gonna use anyways. I really think the only thing holding Obstagoon back is its typing, since Dark Normal isn't that great defensively. But who knows, maybe it could be really amazing. I hope it is, because that'd be cool to see. The other base 520 total Pokemon is number 11, Mr. Rhyme, the evolution of Galarian Mr. Mime. This Ice Psychic type Pokemon has a special attack stat of 110, which of course beat out Obstagoon's physical attack stat of 90. Mr. Rhyme has pretty good special defense of 100, and the rest of its stats are pretty balanced in the 70 to 85 range. I personally think that if Mr. Rhyme ends up being a really highly used Pokemon, it'll be as a utility Pokemon, because it gets access to a lot of really good utility moves, like Baton Pass, Screens, Terrains, and Rapid Spin, which, if you didn't know, was buffed like crazy this generation. Not only was its power increased, but it also gives the user a speed boost. So expect to see Rapid Spin a lot more. Next up is number 10, Centiscorch. This new Bug Fire type Pokemon has a base stat total of 525. It's got an impressive physical attack stat of 115, combined with a great HP stat of 100. Its special attack and special defense are pretty solid, but its physical defense and speed leave a bit more to be desired. I think Scorch is a really cool Pokemon, so I really hope it ends up being good. It's got some really good abilities in Flash Fire and White Smoke, but it is a bit on the slower side, so I think it'll find success as a Choice Scarf user. Also, shout out to Scorch and Salazzle for finally being Pokemon other than Heat more to get access to Fire Lash. Numbers nine, eight, and seven are another tie. This time a three-way tie between the fully evolved Galar starters, Rillaboom, Cinderace, and Inteleon. Based on my tie-breaking method, number nine ends up being Cinderace because its best offensive stat, its base 116 physical attack, is lower than Rillaboom and Inteleon's best offensive stats. Cinderace's best stat is its speed, a blistering 119. The rest of its stats besides attack are underwhelming, but that's okay since Cinderace's role will definitely end up being a fast physical sweeper. Cinderace being the lowest ranked starter is proof that my tie-breaking method is somewhat flawed, because in reality, Cinderace will probably end up being the best starter competitively because of its hidden ability. Its hidden ability is Libero, an ability that is currently not available, but probably will be in the future, and it functions just like Protean. And we saw what Protean did to Greninja's viability. For the next two starters, we have another situation like Dracozolt and Arctozolt where their best offensive stats are equal. Rillaboom's physical attack is 125, and Inteleon's special attack is 125. So we do the tight matchup head-to-head -head matchup, and of course, Rillaboom wins out. So therefore, number eight is Inteleon. Inteleon is another fast sweeper like Cinderace, actually being faster and hitting harder than Cinderace, but being a bit frailer. As of now, I think it has the edge over Cinderace in regards to viability, but once their hidden abilities become available, Cinderace will definitely get the edge because Libero is much better than Sniper. And next, of course, is number seven, Rillaboom. Rillaboom is much slower than the other two starters, but is far bulkier, having base 100 HP stat, 90 defense, and 70 special defense. Plus, it's not super slow either. Base 85 speed is nothing to scoff at. Its hidden ability is Grassy Surge, which will certainly be quite useful once it's made available, because that's basically a free power-up to all of Rillaboom's grass-type moves. Next is number six, Duraludon. 
It has a base stat total of 535, and the stats in which it excels are Physical Defense, which is base 115, and Special Attack, which is base 120. Its Physical Attack is base 95, which is still pretty solid, and its base speed is a decent 85. Unfortunately, its base HP is only 70, and its base special defense is only 50, so it would not handle a strong Earth Power or Focus Blast very well. Notice how I specified those two moves though, because Fighting and Ground are Duraludon's only weaknesses, two types that tend to be more physical. Dragon Steel is just a fantastic defensive typing, only having those two weaknesses that I mentioned, and then having nine resistances plus an immunity. With Duraludon's great stats, I find it hard to believe that Duraludon isn't going to end up being a really great Pokemon in the competitive scene. We have finally made it to the top five, and number five is one that you may not have even known existed. That being Zen Mode Galarian Darmanitan. Darumaka and Darmanitan got Ice-type Galarian forms in Sword and Shield, and kept the same base stat totals as their original forms those being 315 and 480, respectively. However, recall that Darmanitan's hidden ability is Zen Mode, which causes it to change into this form that's basically a statue when its health gets below half. For regular Darmanitan, its Zen Mode form is Fire Psychic type and has a base 540 stat total. For Galarian Darmanitan, its Zen Mode also has a base 540 stat total, but instead of gaining the Psychic type, it gains the Fire type, making Zen Mode Galarian Darmanitan the first Ice Fire type Pokemon to ever exist. Ice Fire is a type combo that I wanted so desperately to be in the game, but I must admit I'm disappointed that it's only on a hard to access alternate form that isn't even as viable as not having that form. If you didn't know, Galarian Darmanitan's normal ability is Gorilla Tactics. Spelled like the animal, not like the actual Gorilla Tactics, which is basically a built-in automatic choice band. So if you combine that with a choice band, Galarian Darmanitan hits crazy hard. So you're almost never going to want to have a Zen Mode Galarian Darmanitan, so it kind of stinks that the Ice Fire type is stuck on a form that no one's going to use. Number four is the last non-legendary on this list because it's a pseudo-legendary. That being Dragapult. This Dragon Ghost type, like every other pseudo-legendary, has a base stat total of 600. It's got an absurdly high speed stat of 142, which is the 14th highest base speed of any Pokemon form ever. If you remove the Pokemon who are not available in Sword and Shield, it has the 4th highest speed. That speed pairs excellently with its base 120 attack and usable base 100 special attack. Its bulk is of course nothing amazing, but it's certainly not terrible. Combine that with its clear body that will prevent it from being slowed down or intimidated, and you've got a Pokemon that is definitely going to be a meta-defining threat in the Sword and Shield competitive scene. We're now up to number 3, which is Eternatus. Now those of you who have done a bit of extra research may be confused as to why Eternatus is number 3 and not number 1. Before I get into why it's number 3, I should explain to those of you who don't know why some might think it should be number 1. Normal Eternatus has a base stat total of 690, a very good base stat total. It's 10 points higher than most buff legendaries like Mewtwo or Zekrom. It boasts incredible HP, special attack, and speed, which are 140, 145, and 130 respectively. The rest of its stats are quite solid as well, with its lowest stat being physical attack, the stat it is far less likely to use. It's a very strong legendary Pokemon that will of course be banned in most battling formats. However, Eternatus also has another form, that being its Eternamax form. This form has the absolutely disgusting base stat total of 1,125, the highest base stat total ever in Pokemon. Its HP, defense, and special defense are all at least 250, then its special attack and speed are 125 and 130, and just to sweeten the deal, its attack is 115. It is by far the strongest Pokemon to ever exist but it's also not real. Okay, I don't know if real is the best word, maybe usable is better, because Eternamax Eternatus is not usable. 
As of right now, no player can ever use an Eternamax Eternatus against an enemy Pokemon. The only time the form is ever even seen in battle is in the climactic battle atop Hammerlock Stadium. That's the only place it is. It's nowhere else. Also, this stat spread is misleading because the battle you fight it within is a four on one battle. This base stat total was given to this Eternatus form to make the battle more like a max raid battle. You never have to fight it one on one. This base stat total is in the code for a boss fight not for any normal Pokemon battle. Therefore, I don't think Eternamax Eternatus should count as the strongest new Pokemon, much less the strongest Pokemon of all time. Every other Pokemon I've ever discussed in the top strongest Pokemon series has been one that you yourself could use in battle, including a Pokemon form that is only there for a singular boss battle that is basically a max raid battle. That just didn't make sense to me but I wanted to address this because I know so many of you know that Eternamax Eternatus exists, so I knew if I didn't talk about it, you'd be wondering why I didn't talk about it. With that covered, that leaves normal Eternatus left as the third strongest new Pokemon. Like I said, it's very, very good, but it's also a legendary Pokemon, so will probably be banned in most competitive formats but should be fun to use in max raid battles. Now it's time for the last two Pokemon, which you've probably figured out by now. Those being the box art legendaries, Zacian and Zamazenta. Both of these Pokemon actually have two forms. their hero of many battles forms and their crowned sword and crowned shield forms. As I said at the beginning, a Pokemon with multiple forms will only count as one entry and whichever one is the stronger one is the one that matters assuming the stronger form can actually be used in battle. Of course, Eternatus, you know, we're not counting that one. These two Pokemon's hero forms have base stat totals of 670. That's very good, but it is less than the base stat total of Eternatus. Their crowned forms are substantially stronger, having base stat totals of 720. That means they are tied with Arceus for the seventh highest base stat total of all Pokemon and all forms, including Megas and Primals, but excluding Eternamax Eternatus. But that also means that they are tied, so I have to do the tie-breaking method that I've done throughout this whole video, the highest offensive stat. As you probably predicted, Zamazenta is more defensive while Zacian is more offensive, so therefore, Zamazenta is number two. Zamazenta's best stats are of course its defense and special defense, which are an incredible 145 each. Its physical attack and speed are also excellent, being 130 and 128 respectively. Its HP is a solid 92, and its special attack is a mediocre 80, but you wouldn't be using special attacks on this Pokemon anyways. Like with Eternatus, this is an OP legendary, so most competitive formats will ban it from the start. However, it'll still be pretty fun to use within your own game, and especially in max raid battles. So that leaves number one, the strongest new Pokemon in Sword and Shield, Zacian Crowned Sword Form. Zacian's defenses are substantially lower than Zamazenta's, being 115 instead of 145. Its HP and special attack are the same, but in exchange for the drop to its defenses, its physical attack and speed are substantially higher. It's got an incredible base 148 speed and an absolutely insane physical attack stat of 170. If you exclude Mega Evolutions and Primal Forms, the only Pokemon with higher physical attack stats are Kartana and Deoxys Attack Form. They do really seem to like power creeping the new legendaries every generation, but on the bright side, they're legendaries. They weren't gonna impact the competitive scene to begin with. So just enjoy kicking butt with it in your own game and in max raid battles and stuff like that. So that wraps up the top 20 strongest new Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Don't forget to pick up a coffee itch super effective shirt before it's gone. And special thanks to my patrons for supporting me and the channel over on Patreon. Links to both the shirts and the Patreon are in the description below. Also, don't forget, I've been posting my Pokemon Sword Let's Play to my second channel, MNJTV Plays, so click over here if you want to watch that. And if you want to watch some more of my fun Pokemon content here on this channel, I recommend this video here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, Pokey fans, gotta catch them all.